Hello guys, welcome back to the Atu podcast. It's Matteo, your host. If you're new to this channel, please subscribe to the channel, like the video, leave a comment down below. Let's grow this art community together. And no further ado, let's go on with a new episode. I'm so sorry. It must be the middle of the night for you there. Uh, no, it's just um five five o'clock. Yeah, around five. So oh, okay, it's not Good. bad. Yeah, <laughs> I'm I'm in Berlin, so yeah, completely different time zone. Where are you calling again? Sorry, Boston. You said I'm near Boston. I'm in Providence, Rhode Island, but no one seems to know where that is, so I just say Boston. <laughs> <laughs> just go for Boston. Yeah, yeah, it's good. good, it's good. Welcome back to the Artful Podcast, guys. Um, with me today, I I was I'm super excited to talk to you. Uh, Natalie, I saw your paintings and um, uh, I, l- I love your your attention for details. And uh, yeah, I know we talk about your paintings a little bit later, but welcome, Natalie, to the to the podcast. Thank yeah, thank you so much for inviting me. It's just it's a real treat to get to talk to somebody in Europe. Like, love the Zoom. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah, yeah. It's it's one of my um, I'm so lucky that uh, I want to do this. And through Instagram, through, you know, social media, I get to the the chance to talk to artists from all over the place and and people that say yes like you and then I get into more like in the ad and how they think about and then how to be an artist and yeah I talk to people from like Africa and Europe and America so yeah lucky it's a it's a, it's a good it's a good thing yeah yeah for sure that's fantastic so um, for people that don't know you, maybe if you want to just give a little bit of an introduction, so uh, where you're from, um, your background, and then we we start from there. Yeah, um, I'm in the United States, and I've sort of lived all over, but mainly sort of the New York City area. Um, I'm in Providence, Rhode Island now, and I do like really small, hyper-realistic trompe l'oeil paintings, which is really just a fancy French word for fool the eye. <laughs> Okay, um, so something that I mentioned um, before, it's the attention on the details that you have. And uh, as you said, this hyper-realistic um, style that you have, which is incredible. Um, I'm going to put some picture on during the video, during the, the interview, so people can have a look at, at your stuff and um, they can appreciate your art. Um cool. Something that I'm curious, it's, um, did you start, uh, did you had any um, background, like studies, uh, art school, or anything like that? Yeah, this is a wild story. Um, I actually used to be a professional cellist. And oh, okay. Yeah, I know, right? I had a whole other career. I moved to New York <laughs> to do my master's degree, the whole thing, and um, just kind of realized, like, I didn't want to do it anymore. I had been playing the cello since I was a little kid. I'd gone to performing arts high school and left home when I was a teenager. And like, that really was my career path. And I just kind of realized that like, it wasn't that creative for me. And Mm. and I was sitting in an orchestra and like kind of playing along with the notes on the page and realized that was not what I wanted to do. So I quit my master's program and decided I would take an art class just for fun because I'd never really gotten to do that because I was playing the cello. (laughs) Mm, yeah so, yeah I just I started taking art classes in New York just as kind of like a fun thing to do on the side and turns out I really loved it so I had a, a complete 180 turnaround in my career fantastic fantastic what, what age did you decide to change um I was probably in my early 20s I think I was 22 nice I really had, had never drawn or painted anything so it was it was starting from scratch tabla rasa <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly um at the age as well it's a uh, it's quite brave to take especially if you had kind of already a career uh, uh already started like the age it's already so confusing for many reasons and yeah. then start to uh, to choose to jump into a, a new a new career it's uh it's pretty brave and well done yeah um so how did you um achieve uh this uh, level of techniques um, how long did it takes you? And um, and and I'm curious, like your 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 like your practice. How did it change through uh, through time? Um, the, it was always something that you was uh, you were in cu- curious on uh, details and uh, um, 
like what you're painting right now or it's, it jumped all over the place yeah. and then I kind of knew from the very beginning like I didn't I loved making art but like it was very clear to me I was attracted to realism mm. and that's probably my background in classical music like I think I'm just wired that way I think maybe if I'd been like a jazz musician I might have liked abstract impressionism you know I, mm. I think I just kind of I just gravitated towards that yeah um so I I knew I always wanted to make it look like the thing <laughs> you know, it's very, very representational and I think that also is just also coming with a music background something that I always admired was virtuosity you know whether okay. that's a violinist or an artist you know that that's always been something that I've always really loved so but you know originally when I was first starting to draw and paint like I loved Salvador Dali like he was one of my favorite painters Hmm. And like, I don't know if you've ever seen the the basket of bread that he's done. That's sort of a companion piece to his, his huge Christ. Yeah. Figure. Yeah. Yeah. I actually just saw this in Spain, like in person a few months Amazing. ago. Yeah. Um, at, we saw his museum there and it was incredible, like to get to see that live, but like what a, what an impression that made on me as an art student, just that level of realism. I mean, it's such a gorgeous painting and it's not something I think I, you, you really associate a lot with, with Dali, but it was amazing. So yeah, I, it's I, a, it's a fun, uh, Dali, it's a fun one because obviously it's, um, it's the iconic painter for surrealism mm -hmm. and we don't think of surrealism, like details and stuff like that. Um, it's all about, you know, the dream and the world that you can create in, in word into the world and it's more, but Salvador Dali had such an amazing attention to details and to mm -hmm. the realism in the surrealism. I don't know if it makes sense. Yeah, but no, I remember absolutely. one time, I think um, I was in Madrid and I, uh, we saw one of the Salvador Dali uh, paintings and I was, uh, it was incredible. The he, He's famous for, you know, this, uh, the hands in the paintings. So it has a lot of painting with hands and the details to like the actual hand, like even the smallest one, it was so realistic and it was crazy. So it's, it's, it's a fun one. Um, I think it's, yeah, for the surrealism that he represents, it's, so, it's such a like contrast when, when you see the paintings, it's, it's so realistic. Yeah, well, and Magritte, like is another like mm. surrealist painter that really inspired me as a, as a young art student, you know, because again, like he has this narrative and the surrealism, but there's also a high level of representational painting. So, yeah, I mean, painters like that really, when I was younger, really informed, I think, the path that I was on. Mm, fantastic. Is um, um, I I was scrolling through your your Instagram and see all your your paintings, and there is a I feel there is a, um, a common um. Of what you paint, like come sub subject on what you paint, it's uh, if, if it feels like you are committed to paint um, like everyday object and uh, something that it's relatable to everybody. For example, I saw um, one with uh, a drawing of a child, and uh, you were re redraw the paint the paintings or the drawing of the of this uh, kid and. Um, and of different objects that you can find every day in your life. Um, is that um, something that you look uh, on purpose, like to represent like everyday um, object and stuff? I think so. I mean, like, like mm. I like, um, I like humor and whimsy. Like that's kind of like a big thing for me, but I, I hadn't really thought of it that way, but I guess a lot of, a lot of my subject matter is very like relatable and sort of common, mm, which yeah. I think, painting it as a trompe piece sort of elevates it a little bit. The fact that it is sort of things you recognize, things that you've experienced and that you know. I think having that trompe experience where it's not sure if it's painted or not, I think probably the choice of subject matter. Yeah, I hadn't really, I hadn't really thought about it, but I think that's, <laughs> it's, it, that's very interesting. I mean, yeah, that. that's, that's what, um, that was my thing when I saw, <laughs> when I saw your paintings is, uh, was, um, there was a lot of, uh, even if I didn't see the exact uh, thing of, of, for example, this drawing of, of these children, um, if even if it wasn't the exact one, I I know it brings me a memory of something that I saw. So I saw already uh, a, a children drawing somewhere at some point. So it relates to me um, like that, and even like objects that you that you paint. It's it's all like stuff that you can find in your in your house. 
and um that that was pre a warm feeling and a nice um feeling that i had when i was scrolling through um your instagram imagine like if you see it from from life it will be yeah it will be amazing um maybe one day one day i'll come to i love to that no, i love that and, and you know what i do paint from life which is like okay a little, a little different like i think a lot of people that are doing high definition work do work from photos hmm. um, but i i love to have everything set up in the studio so did you ever another... drop your foot on uh in portraiture or um, in a portrait do you do portrait all no not really hmm. yeah yeah <laughs> I'm like i i would put people in like if I'm doing like like I, I'm doing a lot of collages right now and they all have most of them have figures in them because that's part of the mm. narrative so like I will paint a photo of a person that I've glued down to something but I don't tend to do people I see, they, I see. they're hard yeah. they move around yeah <laughs> <laughs> they, move, they, they, they move too much for the they details move too much for me yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. Sometimes, as a, as an artist, you you fixate on your on your subject. And um, for example, I I I tried many times, and I traveled a lot, so it was always easy for me to try landscape. But I, it never related to me. I was always like, oh, okay, yeah. I'll I'll do it because I want to practice drawing or paintings. But it was never something that I enjoyed. No, but, oh my god, no! I don't want to ever. Yeah. I think it's so hard. I have so much admiration for landscape painters because like mm. you could put me out in the field with a box of paint and I'd be like, where do I start? I want to go home. Yeah. <laughs> but like if I have to do portrait, it's that's my that's that's my jam. That's what I, I what I love to do. I, I want to represent people. I love I love telling story through my art. And that that's I feel so comfortable starting a painting even from zero white canvas if it's a portrait if it's something else i need to think about like what to do my steps and yeah yeah it's just like yeah. how like how every artist gets into their subject matter and that's it like you feel comfortable doing that yeah i think we're just drawn to certain things like, yeah I, I knew from the get-go that i wanted to paint still life you know mm. like i just that was the thing and i think nice. i don't know it's interesting how we just gravitate towards certain things. I don't know if it's our our our, our experiences or you know really how that's informed. Yeah, people tend to feel. I know some people that do it all really well, but not me. <laughs> <laughs> One thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There are some there are some lucky ones that they can do they can do it all. It's yeah, <laughs> lucky them. Yeah, for mm -hmm. sure. Um. So, did you do you think um when you start um your your process of like from the beginning like your drawing your paintings when you were at the at the first uh drawings and paintings did did you think that um because seeing what, what you what you got uh now your skills and your techniques are, are like next level do you think um that you fixated on learning how to do properly uh certain things and to develop your skills and my second question will be would you suggest this for a for a young artist that is learning something new uh, a new like a new way to paintings a new way to to do drawings do you think that learning a skill almost to master a skill is a really important as an artist yeah i think it depends on your on your goals mm. Like I knew my goal was to be able to draw and paint whatever I wanted at a very mm. high level. Like I always knew that I got very lucky. And then I did a six year apprenticeship with a painter in New York city. And he really taught me everything that I needed to know about drawing and painting. I mean, I, I continue to learn, but as far as a foundational skill yeah. set, yeah, you know, and it was a lot of cast painting. It was a lot of drawing. It was step by step. It was very methodical. I mean, it took me six years to get through his entire program of drawing monochrome painting, color theory, you know, it was, but it was incredible training and it was a lot of practice. And it also gave me a skill set so that when I am on my own working, I can kind of figure out what I need to do. You know, if something's not going right, I, I kind of have a mm. toolbox to get me back on track. Now that was very beneficial for me because of what my goal was, you know, and, and I would, I would say to anybody, any student who wants to learn to draw and paint representationally, having a strong foundation in drawing 
Yeah. You know, like you can't, you'll never draw. I mean, like that's, you got to be able to draw really well. And, and another thing that I found really helpful that I still work on when I teach is monochrome painting. You know, it's like a lot of people, it, it is not sexy. I mean, let's no, be, yeah, it's, it's not sexy. It's not fun. But like the skill set that you can get as far as learning to handle and manipulate paint, understanding values, understanding how you can turn form. You know, if you just have a simple cast or even a simple geometric object, yeah. you can learn so much doing that. And so for for me, that was really valuable. Mm. Yeah, value is such a, an important part of paintings that um, it's kind of like everybody knows it, but nobody really gives them much of importance. And I think if you if you learn how to use the value to the point that you can even use no realistic painting, no no realistic colors, you will it will make sense. Everything will make sense. Yeah, but yeah. value is such a, an important um, part of painting that everybody should learn to almost to like to the book. Um, and then they, you can you can learn how to play with it. You can you know you can challenge it with the crazy colors and crazy shapes and crazy forms. But if you have that, uh, as you said, that foundation uh, is so important, so important. Um, even if you don't want to do hyper realistic drawing or painting as you as you do, um, but yeah, it's a uh, learning like the foundation. It's um, it's always something that I suggest to younger and no young like when I talk to, to artists, um, and, um, I, I was, uh, looking at uh, your, uh, your Instagram and, um, you have a, like a really strong, uh, social media presence. Um, and as an artist now that we, we have to do a, um, it's something that almost like you don't have a choice. <laughs> you, you have to be on social media. You have to promote your art like that. Um, which, uh, which is fun. And, uh, it's, it's, um, it's, it's fine. Like, obviously I do it personally because it helps me to get commissions or, um, even for the podcast and stuff like that. So something that we have to do now, how did you, um, how do you, how do you approach social media in general for your, for your promotions, for your, um, for your art? Yeah. I mean, you know, I kind of feel like, like it gets a bad rap. Like I really enjoy Instagram mm. I don't post so much on Facebook but like I love Instagram because like I've met so many great people you know like we're getting to talk today this wouldn't have happened without that yeah you know, true. Without that platform so like I genuinely enjoy it like I like posting I like interacting with other people and commenting and like looking at art and so I I genuinely have a good time with it um you know and, and I guess like I feel like the most important thing is that you're just posting authentic stuff you know it's like if, if you read my things I write on my posts, it's just like me talking to you. I mean, mm. it's not like, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, it, I'm very much what you get, you know? Um, but I think it can be fun, you know, to, to connect with younger artists. You know, I, I try to do posts where I share stuff like step-by-step step, or I show how I paint something or tools that I use or paint I recommend. You know, I do like to put those out there um, just to kind of share some of my, my yeah. experience as an artist. And, you know, and I think it's fun just for other people to see something different. You know, it's like to see how you set up a painting. You know, it's like it, it seems so easy, but it's like you actually show them how you build these things and like they're falling apart and then like, you know, stuff is falling out of the box. And like, you know, I, I think part of it just sort of demystifies the art, the art experience or the artist's, I don't know, like brand, you know, it's yeah, like I, yeah. I try to make it very authentic. Like this is actually happening in my studio this is really what I'm doing today. And like, you know, it's just kind of sh sharing in that, like that, mm. that's what I like to post. That's yeah. That's, that's fun. Yeah. So some of, some of your videos, I was, they, they don't seem like to, um, um, they're really like friendly. They're really like uh, warm and not to, uh, you know, made on purpose for, uh, social media. It's something organic, uh, I will say, um, they're super fun. And, um, so how do you, what do you want to uh, achieve with your paintings? Because um, it's uh, something that you, um, it's more, it's more for you basically doing, doing paintings or it's something that you want to um, achieve and get to uh, with your paintings. For example, like I love, I love what I do. I love my art. Um, 
but I feel I feel like I need to I need to use my art to share stories. Um, for example, I do a series about immigration, and um, so I represent all these immigrants, and uh, I sh- I try to share their story with my portrait, with my story, with my art. Um, is there something uh, for you, or is that just for the fun of paintings? And um, yeah, how how is that for you? Yeah, I think my work is probably more driven by like humor, joy, whimsy, mm. like light. Um, I don't tend to have like big, heavy, you know, I'm, I'm very light. <laughs> so it's like, and I think Trump Loy also lends itself to humor. I mean, that, nice, that's yeah. really what attracted me to that, that genre in the first place, because the one thing that is unique about Trump Loy and what I really love about it is there's a way you interact with the viewer where they have a little shift in perception, you know, where they see the work, they're not sure if it's painted, then they realize it's painted. And that's kind of the way that I engage, you know, it's yeah. like, that's I guess I want to say kind of the hook right but I mean for me it's also about storytelling I mean like my work has a really strong or I try to make sure it has a really strong narrative that it's not just like something hung on a board that there Hmm. is some kind of a story or some kind of a thing going on that you can engage with that you can kind of bring to it so I do yeah I mean that's I like to connect with people that way that's really my my thing. You said it's uh, storytelling. Um, so how do you decide uh, what it's the object, specific object for specific um, story that you want to tell? Um, how do you approach how do you approach that when you choose what to paint? Yeah, I have it. You can see this is a inspiration board that I have back in the corner, <laughs> which I, I know see. looks really crazy. I know, I know, I look like. <laughs> um, but I like to keep notes like sometimes it's a little piece of poetry it's a Mm. stick it's like a thing I found it's like just little things that inspire painting ideas for me um you know and I just kind of keep them and collect them and and let them kind of cook like right now I'm in the middle of setting up a bunch of new collage models um I have a show coming up this fall so like I kind of have a theme for the show Mm -hmm. you know I'm kind of going through ideas that I have that are going to support that theme and you know I'm beginning to like build stuff now so that's, that, that's so you cool. use your um murder <laughs> wall uh, you know in those the this wall they have like all the connecting the serial killers the, strain, <laughs> the serial <yeah>. killer exactly <laughs> yeah, i know, <laughs> so it, I know it looks bad <laughs> to get inspired i see i see and <laughs> so from the those little notes that you have you find a way to represent them like in real life with a still yeah. Uh, ah, I see. Nice, like the, nice. The collage that I'm working on now, I found this little snippet of poetry. I don't even, I don't even know where I found it. It's been on my board for so long, mm. and it, um, it, it says she gave her heart to a sailor who fell in love with the storms in her soul, and it's just been sitting there. And I was mm. like, oh, I'm, I'm gonna make a collage. I'm gonna have a girl. There's gonna be tentacles. There's gonna be a pirate ship. Like I had this great idea, and of course, when I started working on it, it went in a completely different direction. Mm. <laughs> Um, yeah, you know, which that happens a lot. I'm like, yeah. oh, I know exactly what I'm doing. And then it's never, it's never as planned. Yeah. Up, I'm like, oh, the tentacles are not going to work here. <laughs> it's going to have to be another painting. But, um, you know, I think kind of letting things grow organically, mm. you know, it's like, I'll have nice. an idea to sit maybe like for a box painting, I'm like, oh, I, I want to put this thing in the box and paint it. And once I put it in there, I'm like, you know, like maybe I need to like kind of do something else, you know, maybe. I did a, an apple a couple of years ago and I was like, oh, it's kind of like a Magritte. I'll do an apple in the box to be really cute. And then like, I got it in the box and I'm like, you know what? I kind of need to cut it in half and then stitch it back together. Like mm. we, just, we need more, we need more narrative here. So I think a lot of, a nice. lot of times you let things be organic, you know? Nice. So it all starts from these uh, little notes or stuff that you written down, think like you you have a thought that you want to put it down on paper and then, when you feel inspired, when kind of like feels organic, you start composing in real life what it could be, right? Yeah. And then when you start painting, like you kind of let it happen and whatever the painting goes, you kind of like go with the flow and well, ideas that pops in your mind, your mind. Well, with the paint, like, because I paint from life, like once I have it set up, that's mm. the thing. Like I okay. don't, I don't deviate. All <laughs> like, right. Okay. I mean, the, the painting is not really the creative part mm. for me. The creative part is making the models. You know, it's like figuring out what it's going to be. Yeah. I mean, painting them, honestly, it's kind of a chore. 
you know, it's just like, <laughs> you, just have, kind of, you have to do it. Yeah. To you kind of make show up every day and like paint for 10 hours and it takes a really long time. And like this, this big collage that I'm working on this week, it's like, it's going to be big. I mean, I'm going to be working on it probably six weeks. So mm. I, I kind of have to be excited about it to stay engaged. <laughs> it's a little, nice. it, between me and you, it gets a little boring. <laughs> <laughs> it's, um, it's a similar. Um, so it's, the whole the behind the scene that it's more excites you and makes your brain like sparkle it's um a similar thing what i do with it with the series of immigration that i, that I have it's yes i get to the point that i want to do the portrait mm -hmm. but before that um i interview the i found the immigrants i interview the immigrants i have i've talks with them um it's, it's it's all like learning from them, sharing the, our experience as people that travels and as immigrants. And the portrait, yes, represent that, but the process before is such a vital part for, for me to get to the portrait. So it's a similar situation with your, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, your you, you, you need that information mm. to be able to bring, to, to express your, the interaction the two of you have. I mean, the, the portrait is like a dialogue. Mm -hmm. So it's like the, the more that you know about that person and their experiences, I just would think like that's going to inform the painting so much. Exactly, exactly, yeah. And um, before, I, I don't want to take too much time of, of your day. Um, before we, we leave, uh, last question that I try to ask um, all, the, um, all the artists that I interview, uh, especially if they have all the experience that you have as a painter. Uh, advice that you can give to who wants to start um, a younger artist or non or whatever, a professional artist that is listening right now, what would you like to share about your experience as an artist and a little advice for, for them? Yeah, I mean, I my big piece of advice is always make art friends, like mm -hmm. find people who make the art that you like. And like, I mean, they don't have to make the same kind of art as you, but like, my my feeling is like we we all have lots of friends, you know, that are yeah. supportive of us as artists. But finding somebody who also makes art, this is it's unique. You know, they really understand what you're going through. They can support you in ways that like civilian friends can't. Like they they really understand what you're doing, and mm -hmm. that to me has been invaluable. I mean, whether like I am helping a younger artist or a more experienced artist is helping me, you know, it just becomes this like pool of information and support and help and just compassion, I think. Mm, that's the first one. I never, um, yeah, nobody ever it's... said anything, anything like that. I think it's really important, the community aspect of being yeah, an artist, then, yeah. You know, Instagram in a weird way has been really helpful. Like yeah. I, there are some people that I've met on there that have become good art friends of mine that I meet up with in real life now. They're on the other side of the country, but, you know, we still get together once in a while. And that's, it's been great. I mean, I just, I think that can be so helpful and, and shouldn't be overlooked because we do spend a lot of time alone in the studio. Yeah, yeah, know? true. It can be really so, uh, lonely. Yeah, yeah, it gets, sometimes it, it gets is. too lonely. <laughs> it is, you know, and it's like, it, I think that's something that we don't talk about a lot is like the kind of the isolation and loneliness that is required when you have to, mm. when you spend a lot of hours in the studio by yourself, so it's uh, it's one of the reason why I started this. It's um was during the um the the pandemic actually, and I just finished uh, university, so I was always uh, surrounded by all these uh, artists and friends we were talking about. We were spend hours in the studios together, and then all of a sudden we couldn't, and then I was missing that part. And then yeah. I was, I, I love podcast anyway. So, uh, and I always want to kind of like start one. So I was like, okay, let's do this. And we, yeah, we just meet some friends online and we talk about art um, every week. So it's a, a, a community aspect that I, I was missing that I want to uh, do with this podcast as well. But yeah, basically that's really important. Um, thank you very much, Natalie, to be part of the podcast. Uh, it was, it was a great yeah. uh, conversation. Thank you. I really enjoyed it. Thank you so much for inviting me on. Now, do you want to uh, plug uh, your Instagram, your if you have any exhibition coming, any project like that? Yeah, um, I have an Instagram. <laughs> like, send me a DM. I love to chat with people. It's in Featherston underscore fine underscore art, or you can probably just put in Natalie Featherston and it'll pop up. Perfect. Um, yeah, I've got a, I have a big solo show coming up in the fall. So that's with Meyer Gallery in Santa Fe, New Mexico. And 
I do a lot of work with them. They're my main gallery. So that's Amazing. all I'm doing between now and October. That's it. <laughs> I mean, and I'm going to teach. I have a couple, I have a few workshops coming up this year too, but. Amazing. Amazing. Is that workshop like uh, something they can contact you and get uh, in touch for the workshop or is that local? Um, I'm doing a couple of in-person workshops at okay. like Scottsdale Artist School and Academy of Realist Art in Boston, but I'm going to offer an online workshop through the Scottsdale Artist School this spring so amazing it's my first time doing it online we'll see how it goes <laughs> let's see let's see i will put all the links in the description so people can just go there and um follow you uh, straight away and thank you very much again natalie it was it was amazing thank you thanks so much